Hi and welcome to maybe the last video on this channel for this year. And today I will tell you a bit about my plans for next year. But before that, I want to go through the top five of my best wildlife photos of this year connected with the videos that belong to them. Before we start, you may be going to hear some other people in the background far away because this is the first day of Christmas and we're finally really good weather. You see, it's really lovely sunlight really lovely winter sunlight. First video, first photo I want to start with is the most successful video on this video and it's about the comparison between a Nikon 200 to 500 and Tamron when we were in the wildlife fight in Manadal. And that day was in general really great because we just up really early, we leave really late, we focusing the whole day on the wildlife photography and I was just just something to experience. And even though we didn't see golden eagle, but we saw the go shark, and I really like my photos of the go shark, even though they're not that spectacular, I had some other photos that day that I liked even more. And those are of the Eurasian Jay. And it's just so nice that the background and the foreground of that photo are so separated because we use that really long lens, like at 600 milliliter, milliliter, millimeter, the Tamron and had it with the crop sensor camera, the D7200. And that just worked out so good together to separate the foreground from the background. The subject was really close to me. So I thought those are the photos from that video that worked out the best, even though most people came, of course, for the go shock. And I can understand that really impressive animal. And I was glad to see that on that day. The next video is from a trip through Norway. I don't think you all have seen all the episodes. Most people came for the wildlife episodes two and three, and I'm gonna talk about those especially today. No landscape photos this year in this top photo uh, compilation because I just didn't take that much landscape photos this year. It was more about wildlife and I enjoyed that really well. And Maybe you haven't seen the last episode, which is basically we go out and enjoy some cabin trip with our dog. Uh, but I can only recommend tuning in if you want to know a bit more like how it is to be on holiday or living in Norway in general, just for fun. But the video that I'm talking about is the episode two, where we are on Doverfjell. And Doverfjell is just such a great place. And I really want to go back, but it's not on my highest priority list because I've just been there kind of. It would be real nice to see it in another season. But on that day, in those 24 hours, we've seen so many animals from small birds like willow warblers and the blue throat. But of course, we've seen the Arctic fox in the morning. And it was really important for me, as other places on the trip, to show those places to Anne because she's Norwegian and she hasn't been there before and didn't enjoy them before, like hadn't the opportunity. And to see the Arctic fox, to be so lucky again uh, this year, is just immeasurable. And I just shortly want to explain how that photo that I'm particularly talking about came to mind. It is kind of a natural reaction, but the fox without us being there wouldn't have looked like that. Because I was laying there shooting the fox while he was just sitting there and scratching himself and Anne wanted to come over to me, but she didn't want to go in the direct side of the fox to not just disturb him and scare him away. And on that way, she went a bit down along the rocks and on the rocks she slid and nearly fell down those rocks. Anne is fine. <laughs> but then the fox looked up and that's when I got that one shot where he's like having his eyes kind of really kind of open. And... He was basically just surprised to suddenly, in that peaceful morning, hear that noise of rolling rocks. But, I mean, he stayed and <laughs> it was not that big of a disturbance. But I just shortly want to explain that. I explained that to someone in the comments that really liked that photo of the, in that video, in the comments there. And I wanted to tell that story to you all in this top five uh, videos and photos of 2020. Yes, Dovefjell, I'm coming again, but maybe not next year. Or not really in summer again for now. 
The third video and photo goes also a bit back earlier this year when I was out and shot the photos with Anne of the Caper Kelly. And I never met a Caper Kelly in the wild before. I know that they exist in Germany, but they are really threatened. And here, they're kind of close by. They're also in some areas threatened, but I think they do way better than in Germany. To really experience that wild animal was kind of a thing in itself. I mean, he would attack anything. I talked with people in the forest that I just randomly met. They would say, yeah, my dog is kind of really afraid of him. And uh, to meet that in person was kind of a rough dance with the Kuiper Kelly, if you would say so, yes. But also just being there at the right time of the day, I calculated, yes, to be there really late so that the light that came like in March and April was like getting later and later evening light, just being there late, getting those last sunlight coming through the trees, backlight the animal, was just great fun. And also, okay, calculated from my part, I would say, I still don't have the photos of a Kappa Kelly I want. For next year, I would wish to see more of the females. I saw some of them, I was not able to photograph them and maybe more of the mating ritual. I would like to see that in total of the Caper Kellys because that's kind of exciting. But I have to put some work into that. I will go to that place again uh, to get some shots of that Caper Kelly, but also my family, uh, the sister of my uh, girlfriend, the sister of Anne and her husband in their forest, they heard Caper Kellys, they are there and I will try to work on finding them for that season. I'm looking really forward to that. I can't, I nearly can't wait for that time of the year to come. Spring is just so fabulous. <laughs> I can't wait to do just more field work and that kind of stuff. So that was in my top five, definitely the Kappa Kelly. A lot of, a lot of beautiful shots for my repertoire at least. The next video is also from a trip from Norway and this time it's the third video and it's of course the puffins and then there was also the skua, a really pretty bird as well. The next time I will go to Rinde I will try to focus on other animals like birds of prey, you saw the eagles for example, but there are also otters on the island, so it's a really exciting place to be, but always when you're there and it's the evening light, everyone is going to shoot the puffins and you get fear of missing out and you just also want to take photos of puffins and <laughs> it's really hard to not fall into that pattern. But everyone that has shot puffins before or that is looking forward to shoot puffins knows it's it's so hard to not take photos of them because there's just that great detail in their faces. This year it was a bit different than when I was there last time 2018 and took my first real photos of puffins. Because this time they put up a bit more fences and I think that's good. Because it protects the animals more from, because there are a lot of people, it's a really famous place. And just that they get some more protection, that's good. And it also changes the photography. While in 2018 I was taking like really close up photos nearly. Now I had to integrate more of the landscape where they sit in. And I think that's always an important part of landscape, uh, landscape photography, of wildlife photography that we forget. We want to get so close, just getting close up to the animal to get a profile photo that we forget that it's actually really enjoyable to see the animal in its natural habitat. And this year that was a bit different and that changed my photos and I'm really glad about it. My favorite is the photo where I have the puffin coming out from under the stone, like it looks like a helmet and I enjoy this one really much. It was great to go there, but next time I have some other things to do there. And also I wanted to show that place to Anne because she has never been there. And that was just amazing for both of us to share that experience.
The last photo and the last video, and now some people will already know if I say my best wildlife experience so far, uh, the people that watch the subscriber special, I'm talking about shooting photos of the badger. A lot of people have seen the field work video where I'm just looking for animals, but there is a second video where I actually get the opportunity to shoot photos of the badger. And I enjoyed that really much. Uh, it was a process over the whole year to learn how to find the animals, then in the end I got a hint from a friend of course, but I still had to do put in my own work days there to set out the cameras, see when they are there, at what times, and then be out there for uh, yeah at least 10 or more days to have once the opportunity to see the badger and shoot a photo of it. Of course it's really in low light, but just the experience and the way as a wildlife photographer to get from seeing signs of the animals, having the animal on camera, seeing the animal yourself, taking photos but now next step is to get great photos which I'm really looking forward for next year getting great photos of a badger I have a new location I know they live there I know that they worked on their den uh, shortly before when f fall came and winter I had a few looks on it and I know they're there and for next spring I just hope that I get photos of them because there the lighting conditions should be better than what I knew so far so I hope you look forward to that. I hope you enjoyed these videos. There was a lot of fun this year and that one I want to talk about now how the development was. So you've seen for the people that have been there already last year when I did like the Horizon series and I was on Doverfjell. I think a lot of people haven't seen that from last year and I think uh, if you're into wildlife have a look around there. Um, <laughs> I would be glad if you enjoyed them. and. This year the channel suddenly grew because of that Go Shock video. And of course I'm glad about that. I think right now it has like 18k views, which is unbelievable. My best video back then had maybe <laughs> um, 400. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Uh, so thanks for everyone for tuning in. And then maybe even afterwards watching that video, subscribing to the channel. That was kind of insane to me that the first half of this year was just so different from what I experienced before because while you're doing YouTube at least I'm thinking often about quitting and that's just because YouTube puts kind of a pressure on you uh, to just constantly produce videos because it's so easy to get irrelevant people just forget about you and I didn't like I don't like that because I know without YouTube I would make videos but of course I like to share them with you, but it always comes with a grain of salt that you just get stressed by it. Then in the later weeks of this year, um, it didn't go so well anymore. I mean, I guess it was still good for what you compared to last year. And that just gnaws on my mental health if I want or not. Uh, it's just hard to ignore. I wish I could just ignore it. So that was like in the end of this year a bit bad but it was combined with a lot of other things. I'm really sad right now that I couldn't go home and visit my family for Christmas and was the original plan for this year. Didn't work out, you know, you all know why. <laughs> and um, that made me sad, but then there also was like this horrible period over the last four weeks where we haven't seen the sun at all. The days are short, so if it's cloudy, it's just nearly dark all the time. It was raining constantly the forest is underwater the dog doesn't want to go out it's it was a depressing period i have to say all these things combined just made me really unhappy yeah i'm really glad that the sun is back now <laughs> it just didn't work out well together because i was out i wanted to film for you i wanted to show you something I wanted to do some field craft. I've built uh, brush piles, like someone of you recommended. I think it was Comraxi that uh, recommended uh, building a brush piles in the new forest. I set out some cameras, but in that rain, the cameras don't react. One of the cameras just dies. And if they react, you don't see anything on the cameras, which made it really hard for me to get through those last weeks. Because then you have no material, you have nothing to work with when you come home and then you have nothing to show and then you become a bit stressed about the channel and uh, I wish I could just pack that away for some time. Sometimes I just wish I like, yeah, 
it's stress that I don't need. So this is not, this is maybe just the last video for this year. I don't think it's the last video on this channel, but next year maybe the frequency will be less or yeah, there won't be so much. But we have to see about that. That's the one thing I wanted to talk about, which was not so easy the last two months or something. So for next year, I want to integrate some other things into the program, which are hiking a lot and being outdoors in general. I think I have to learn a lot about staying outdoors in the cold. And I think if I could gain up some knowledge there, I could show you something of that because all most of people here watching this channel are about wildlife photography and staying out in the cold in winter can be quite challenging. And maybe we find some ways together Maybe you learned something from me. I always learn something from you about just staying out and doing those kind of things. Uh, hopefully the dog is going to join me a lot because he is kind of a heater and that will help me in any case. Then also will be a part, hopefully, uh, some long distance tracking with uh, wildlife equipment because that can be really challenging we all know, for our backs and for our body. Uh, we always want to take photos, but it can be hard to get all the equipment out in the field. And we have some plans, but we didn't, like, we have some ideas, but we don't really have plans. For me, it's especially, I want to get better, in better shape right now, because why should I really plan out every detail of a trip if I know that I can't do it with my body? So I have to work out, I have to get ready for those trips. I'm looking really forward to a lot of projects next year on this channel. Yeah, there are a few more things to say. The channel is monetized now. I don't really see any much money coming from that, but I will experiment uh, with the ads because I think if you put ads on your videos, YouTube is showing it to more people. I'm not entirely sure about that algorithm-wise, but it would make sense because then they earn money, right? Um, but that means I will put ads on most videos. I will experiment a bit with the ones that go a bit more out and put them there in different places, but I don't think in general on the most of the videos I, I won't put ads in the middle of the video because I think that breaks the feeling of this outdoor, outdoor feeling. I don't want that. Normally they should be at the end of the video and who wants, who wants to support the channel can just watch them afterwards or yeah, and skip them afterwards. <laughs> and on community specials, like subscriber specials, the next one at 2000 guys, still a way to go. Uh, there will be no ads and also on trailers, I don't see the reason to put ads on them. Because it's basically just the people that know this channel that watch those videos and why should I bother you with uh, ads? There's no reason in that. On the other hand, I'm not sure how long I want to take the Patreon. I just wanted to try it out and I'm not sure how much reason I see in it right now. Of course, I want to thank my Patreons. You've got to be at the end of the video again. I want to thank you really much for supporting me. I really appreciate that, but I'm not sure if I want to keep the Patreon up. Um, I have to just look out for other things in the future. I think that's most and nearly all what I wanted to say today. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, maybe tell me what other photo you might think would have made it into this list. What other video was really great for you. And until next year, I wish you just a really good start into the next year. I think we can all use another year. I hope you had a good Christmas. Uh, I was certainly uh, w welcomed here in Anne's family again for this Christmas. And maybe I see my family soon as well. Uh, that would be great. And yes, until the next video, I just hope you do great. I just hope you have better, had better weather than I had in the fall and that you have some fun with the photography out there. I can wait to make more content, but only in the directions that I like at the times that I like. So, bye guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.